Imagine waking up to the ground shaking violently beneath your feet. Buildings crumbling, roads splitting open, and chaos erupting as nature unleashes its fury. This is the grim reality millions of Americans could face when one of the country's three most dangerous earthquake zones erupts. From the infamous San Andreas Fault in California, to the hidden giants of the Cascadia Subduction Zone in the Pacific Northwest, and the unsuspecting Numad Ridge Seismic Zone in the Heartland, these geological powerhouses have the potential to unleash devastation on an unprecedented scale. Each one is a ticking time bomb, poised to alter the lives of millions and reshape the very fabric of the regions they inhabit. It's not just a question of if these disasters will strike, it's a question of when. But which of these seismic giants is the most dangerous? And which one will strike first? Join us today as we delve into the three megaquakes that could destroy America. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The San Andreas Fault, a 750-mile-long fracture in the Earth's crust, is one of the most famous earthquake zones globally. Located in California, it marks the boundary between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. The fault's notoriety stems from its history of producing massive earthquakes and its location near some of the United States' most populous regions. The San Andreas Fault is a strike-slip fault, meaning the plates on either side move horizontally past each other. Stress builds up as the plates grind against one another, releasing in violent earthquakes when the stress exceeds the rock's breaking point. The fault is divided into three segments, northern, central, and southern. The southern segment, in particular, is overdue for a significant rupture. Experts warn that an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 or higher is inevitable and could strike at any time. The San Andreas Fault's most infamous earthquake was the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which measured an estimated magnitude of 7.9. It caused widespread destruction, fires, and the deaths of approximately 3,000 people. Another significant event occurred in 1989, when the Loma Prieta earthquake shook the Bay Area, causing freeway collapses and killing 63 people. Despite these events, the fault has not released its full potential in the southern segment for over 150 years. A major earthquake on the southern San Andreas Fault would devastate Southern California. Cities such as Los Angeles, San Bernardino, and Riverside would face massive infrastructure collapse, fires, and potential loss of life. Estimates suggest damages could exceed $200 billion, with significant disruptions to the region's economy. While the San Andreas Fault garners significant attention, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a 620-mile-long fault running from Northern California to Southern Canada, poses an even greater threat. This fault lies offshore, where the Juan de Fuca Plate is subducting beneath the North American Plate. Subduction zones are responsible for producing the largest earthquakes on Earth, known as megathrust earthquakes. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is unique in that it can produce earthquakes of magnitude 9.0 or higher, accompanied by massive tsunamis. These events are rare but catastrophic. The last major earthquake occurred in 1700 and was so powerful that it caused a tsunami that reached Japan. Geological evidence shows that such events occur every 300 to 600 years, meaning Cascadia is within the window for its next megathrust earthquake. A Cascadia earthquake would be one of the most devastating natural disasters in North American history. Coastal cities like Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver would experience intense shaking while low-lying areas could be inundated by a tsunami within minutes. Critical infrastructure, including bridges, highways, and power grids, would likely collapse. FEMA estimates that a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and tsunami could cause over 13,000 fatalities and $80 billion in damages, with recovery taking decades. Located in the central United States, the new Madrid seismic zone poses a stark contrast to the coastal threats of the San Andreas and Cascadia faults. This region, centered near the Mississippi River, encompasses parts of Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois. 
Despite being far from tectonic plate boundaries, the new Mad Rid Zone is capable of producing powerful earthquakes. This seismic zone is an ancient rift zone where the Earth's crust is weaker, allowing stress to accumulate and release in earthquakes. Unlike the linear faults of California and the Pacific Northwest, the new Mad Rid Zone is characterized by a diffuse network of faults, making its seismic activity less predictable. The zone's geology amplifies shaking, increasing the potential for widespread damage. Between December 1811 and February 1812, a series of three massive earthquakes struck the new Mad Rid region, with magnitudes estimated between 7.0 and 8.0. These quakes caused the Mississippi River to flow backward temporarily, created new lakes, and caused widespread destruction in sparsely populated areas. The effects were felt as far away as the East Coast, where church bells rang in Boston. Today, the new Mad Rid seismic zone threatens a much more densely populated and economically vital region. Unlike California and the Pacific Northwest, the central U.S. is not as prepared for earthquakes, with fewer buildings designed to withstand seismic forces. A repeat of the 1811 to 1812 events could cause tens of billions of dollars in damages and lead to thousands of casualties. The San Andreas Fault, Cascadia Subduction Zone, and New Mad Rid Seismic Zone are all uniquely dangerous, but their differences in geology, frequency, and potential impacts make for a compelling comparison. Each poses specific challenges and vulnerabilities, shaping how scientists, governments, and residents prepare for the inevitable. The Cascadia Subduction Zone stands out for its ability to produce some of the largest earthquakes on Earth, with magnitudes exceeding 9.0. These megathrust earthquakes are accompanied by tsunamis, amplifying their destructive potential. In comparison, the San Andreas Fault is unlikely to produce a quake greater than magnitude 8.0, but its frequent activity and location near major population centers make it highly hazardous. The new Mad Rid Seismic Zone historically produced earthquakes with magnitudes of 7.0 to 8.0, which, while smaller, have amplified effects due to the unique geology of the central United States. The San Andreas Fault is the most active of the three, with significant earthquakes occurring roughly every 100 to 200 years in various segments. This regularity gives scientists a clear understanding of its cycle. Cascadia's megathrust earthquakes, on the other hand, occur every 300 to 600 years, making them less frequent but far more catastrophic. The new Mad Rid Seismic Zone is the least predictable, with irregular recurrence intervals spanning centuries. The San Andreas Fault primarily threatens densely populated areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Bernardino, where urban sprawl and critical infrastructure are at risk. The Cascadia Subduction Zone poses a dual threat, intense shaking, and a tsunami that could devastate coastal cities like Seattle and Portland, as well as smaller, more vulnerable communities. The new Mad Rid Seismic Zone, although in a less seismically active region, has the potential to impact a vast area due to the geology of the central U.S. Where seismic waves travel farther and cause more widespread shaking, cities like Memphis and St. Louis are particularly vulnerable. California is the best prepared region given its long history of seismic activity. Strict building codes, earthquake retrofitting, and public awareness campaigns have made the state relatively resilient. In contrast, the Pacific Northwest has been slower to adopt similar measures, leaving the region underprepared for a Cascadia megathrust earthquake. The central U.S., particularly in the new Mad Rid seismic zone, has even fewer seismic safeguards, as earthquakes are perceived as rare, leading to older, vulnerable infrastructure and limited public preparedness. Predicting when and where a megaquake will strike is one of the greatest challenges in seismology. Each of the three major earthquake zones, San Andreas, Cascadia, and New Madrid, has unique characteristics that influence its likelihood of producing the next catastrophic event. While pinpointing an exact timeline is impossible, scientific analysis offers insights into which of these geological giants might be the first to awaken. 
The San Andreas Fault, particularly its southern segment, is widely regarded as overdue for a massive earthquake. Studies show that stress has been building along this segment for over 150 years, and the fault is thought to release major seismic energy every 150 to 200 years. With Southern California's dense population and critical infrastructure, a major quake here is not just a question of if, but when. Scientists have even simulated scenarios like the ShakeOut model, which predicts widespread devastation from a magnitude 7.8 event. Meanwhile, the Cascadia subduction zone poses an equally ominous threat. This fault can unleash magnitude 9.0 earthquakes, but such events occur less frequently, roughly every 300 to 600 years. The last megathrust earthquake in Cascadia was in 1700, placing the region squarely within the time frame for another catastrophic event. Finally, the new Mad Rid seismic zone, though less predictable, has shown episodic bursts of seismic activity. Its last series of major quakes occurred in 1811 to 1812, but its recurrence intervals are irregular, making it harder to estimate when another earthquake might strike. While the San Andreas Fault appears to be the most imminent threat due to its regular activity and overdue status, both Cascadia and New Madrid remain unpredictable giants. The reality is that all three zones could unleash their destructive potential with little warning, reminding us of nature's unsettling unpredictability. The future of the San Andreas Fault, Cascadia Subduction Zone, and New Madrid Seismic Zone is not a question of speculation, but inevitability. These seismic giants will eventually rupture, causing devastation that could reshape entire regions. Understanding their behavior and preparing for their impacts is crucial for minimizing the loss of life and economic destruction. The future demands resilience, innovation, and proactive strategies to face these looming megaquakes. While they cannot be stopped, their impacts can be mitigated through investment in preparedness, infrastructure, and public education. Which earthquake do you think will strike America first? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.